Us joining me right now is House Minority Whip, Louisiana Congressman Steve Scalise. Congressman, it's always a pleasure to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Morning. Good to be with you, Maria. Well, the last time we moved all non-essential staff out of Iraq was right before the Iraq War. How serious is this situation with Iran, Congressman? Well, it's serious. They've been making very credible threats, Maria. And the president's preparing uh, to make sure that America's properly defended. Hopefully it doesn't come to any kind of conflict. And Iran recognizes uh, that if they attack, uh, attack America, uh, there's going to be severe consequences uh, to them. Uh, but it does show, Maria, uh, that these sanctions are working. What President Trump has done uh, to force Iran to confront this nuclear weapons program that they're trying to develop and saying we're not going to have a nuclear armed Iran and the sanctions to go behind it, uh, it shows how effective they are. Uh, but if Iran thinks that they can attack us uh, with some mild response, I think they're seeing right now it would be a very bad mistake. Um, let me ask you, Steve, uh, uh, about the China trade tensions, because the two sides no closer to a deal this morning as a U.S. warship sails near disputed islands in the South China Sea. Look, it really seems, Congressman, that these talks have collapsed. How important is it for the two countries to come up with a deal? Well, the, I wouldn't say they've collapsed. Obviously, we've run into uh, a disagreement on how to properly enforce trade laws. And the reason is because China is not used to complying with trade laws with anybody. Uh, they cheat, they dump, they steal property. And now we've got an agreement that President Trump and Ambassador Lighthizer are trying to get an, a negotiated agreement on uh, that would be enforceable. I hope we get there. I think China's seeing that their economy needs America's economy uh, more than we need theirs right now. And, and hopefully we get both sides to agree because it would be better for all of us. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, somebody's going to have to ch stand up to China. And I'm glad that President Trump finally is. And by the way, our allies all around the world are glad that this confrontation is happening because they want to see China comply with the rules everybody else has to play by. Yeah, I mean, there are rules of the road, and the, and the Chinese are going to have to convince the world, not just the United States, that, you know, their technology is safe to use, like Huawei Telecom, which, as we know, is state-owned. So how much pain do you think the U.S. administration is willing to take in terms of the economic impact? We're already seeing an impact on markets this morning because a number of the component makers have uh, stopped selling and announced they will stop selling to Huawei. So you've got companies like Google and Xilinx and Broadcom, all the component makers that sell into Huawei, trading down and taking the whole market with it. I know that the Chinese economy is probably worse off. They had auto sales down 17% last quarter. But still, the U.S. gets impacted as well. Sure, it has an impact on everybody. That's why we'd like to see it resolved. But at the same time, uh, if China is not willing to play by the rules that everybody else has to play by, how many more years are we just going to sit by? Uh, China's been doing this for a long, long time. And, and by the way, I'm glad to see our technology companies here in America stand up to Huawei. I think we have the ability to counter the technology that they have. For whatever reason, over the last 10, 20 years, Huawei's been able to corner this market. And frankly, it's, it's concerning to a lot of us. You see the Department of Defense taking action to move away from their products. If we can't trust uh, that the, the information that we're sending over Huawei's products is safe and secure, uh, then I think there are other people out there, especially our American technology companies that lead the world, uh, that can step up and replace uh, what they've been doing. And, and I think you're seeing that action start to happen. Look, one of the priorities for the, for the House and certainly for the president in the next couple of months is getting uh, USMCA signed into law. Do you think that Nancy Pelosi is going to bring it down to the floor for a vote, Congressman? I hope she does. And there are Republicans and Democrats uh, in Congress who want to see USMCA brought to the floor. Uh, I think you see President Trump and Ambassador Lighthizer continuing to make good faith negotiations with the Democrats to try to address any issues that they have. Uh, but when you saw the president take action to drop the steel and aluminum tariffs, I think that was a very positive sign. Uh, but it shows you uh, we have a lot to gain. Our economy has a lot to gain. American workers, agriculture, uh, community. Uh, you see a lot of other industries that have a lot to gain uh, by getting this done. And so hopefully these delays don't, don't go on any longer because the delays are costing us jobs. There's a lot that we can 
uh, see from a USMCA deal getting done. And Canada and Mexico want to, want to get this done as well. And the Trump administration is announcing that it is hosting an economic workshop next month with Bahrain, the event aimed at showcasing economic gains that could be made possibly by a peace agreement. Congressman, your reaction on this, what should the American people understand about a partnership with Bahrain? Well, again, this is just one more example of President Trump trying to get an agreement with countries all around the world to, uh, to improve our relationships and our trading ability uh, to, to be able to negotiate better deals with other countries. I guess one of the bigger issues is do we have an alliance of countries that are with us, Congressman, in the fight against China? Because it's not just a U.S. situation. I mean, I recognize that the Chinese have been stealing intellectual property from the United States and from the West for, for decades, but this is the whole world. Do, we, do you feel that the U.S. has an alliance against China? That's why the conversation of whether or not staying in TPP uh, was a mistake that we pulled out. That, that issue keeps coming up now with, with the current situation with China. Well, Maria, there's going to be opportunities to get better agreements with our Asian friends. There were concerns with TPP. Uh, but when you look at all of our friends around the world, uh, there is a widespread alliance, a worldwide alliance that want to take on China. But everybody knows, Maria, the only person that can lead that fight is the United States. Our economy is so dominant right now. Uh, we've got great economic news in America. We see it. We see the great economic numbers, and you show them all the time, and it's because of the tax cuts and the easing of regulations that were killing American jobs without having any benefit on the economy. Uh, so having a stable environment uh, for our regulations and lower taxes has made America, once again, the dominant economy in the world, and it's allowed us, it's given us greater leverage to lead that fight against China. But make no mistake, all of our allies, when you talk to them individually, even collectively, have been wanting to take on China and get China to play by the rules that everybody else plays by. But they all know the only way it can happen is, this, is if America takes the lead. And you're seeing that now. And you're seeing China's economy react from it. Again, we, we would like to see this resolved. Uh, but it's got to be resolved in a way that's fair for America and it'll benefit all of our friends around the world. Yeah. But it starts here at home. I mean, now that the president has painted, out, painted all of the issues so clearly to the American people, it feels like people want him to stay strong at this point, even, even the other side. Chuck Schumer tweeting that as well. Look, you and your colleagues did an excellent job in terms of economic policy in the last two years. You, uh, you know, making sure to get the right tax package in front of the president to sign, uh, move the needle on economic growth. The president's deregulation program obviously also helped. But now, Congressman, there is an Axios report this morning, as you know, that President Trump is urging you to run for the governorship of Louisiana. Are you going to do it? <laughs> no, Maria, I appreciated his, uh, his, his question about that, but um, it was more just a conversation. Uh, ultimately, I think you want to see President Trump wants to see our economy continue to grow. He wants to see us uh, continue to build on the reforms we've made. You see Nancy Pelosi and the Democrat Party moving so far to the socialist left that I think it's concerned a lot of people just how far the Democrat Party's moved. It's not the party it used to be, and President Trump recognizes that. So will you and your colleagues be able to get the majority back in the next two years? I feel very confident we will. I first think, most importantly, uh, that President Trump is in a great position to win re-election. He's got a great story to tell. But you see the economy growing so much. You see people having higher wages. The real beneficiaries uh, to President Trump's economy and to President Trump's policies have been American workers. Jobs are coming back to America and wages are higher, better opportunities than we've ever seen before. And President Trump's telling that story. And then you see on the socialist left, uh, they're moving so far uh, that they want to do things like the Green New Deal, where cars and uh, you know airplanes would be extinct in 10 years, this kind of lunacy. Uh, and then they want to do things. They're going to reinstate uh, the carbon tax idea. They yeah. want to raise your taxes. They want to take away your wage growth. People don't want to see that. So President Trump winning re-election gives us an even stronger chance to take back the House. All right, Congressman, we'll be watching. Going to be an exciting two years. Congressman Steve Scalise, always a pleasure. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Maria.